everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking to Julio because I recently made him read Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson. He read the first book in the trilogy so far. So we just wanted to sit down and talk about what his thoughts were and if he might want to read High Fantasy again in the future. Sounds good to me. So I put together a list of questions for him just to kind of um, see where he's at. And at the end of the video, I did provide some spoiler questions. So if you want more specific things about Mistborn, he's going to talk more specifically about his thoughts at the end. But most of this video is going to be spoiler free. First question for you is what were your overall thoughts about Mistborn as a book in general? General overall thoughts about Mistborn was that it was a great start to a trilogy. I enjoyed reading it, and very general thoughts are that it was well written. Okay, so you, you liked it? Yeah, I, you, could, you could generally say that. I liked it. <laughs> generally, we liked it. Okay. Yeah, it was generally well liked. <laughs> generally. By, by meme. <laughs> <laughs> generally. Okay, well, do you plan on continuing the series? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can't start the trilogy and then... Well, I guess you could, You huh? could if you didn't like it. Um, I'll continue because I liked it. Okay. So, yes, I do plan on reading it. I'm actually already reading book two right now. Excellent. Mm -hmm. How far are you into book two? Uh, maybe five or six chapters, so right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just scratching the surface. Um, what are your thoughts on Sanderson's writing? Hmm. I like his writing, and I think I was particularly looking for something that was well-written, um... I read a few young adult books leading up to Mistborn, and mainly just because I wanted to... So what did you read? Uh, let's see. I read the Scythe trilogy, and that was it. Um, <laughs> so when I say a few, I mean just one. But that's a few. You read um, the whole trilogy. Yeah, I read the whole trilogy. So I, was, I enjoyed it. I liked the story, but um, I was looking for something a little bit more... Uh, written for an adult audience, something that was maybe a more advanced vocabulary, something that was a little bit more uh, complex of a story, and I definitely got that with Mistborn. So would you read other books by Sanderson in other series? Yes, I would. I think that since I'm a first-year teacher, that a lot of my time needs to be protected to create great lesson plans. And I think that I have to be very strategic on what I pick because his books are very long. And, um, well, with reading Mistborn, the chapters are very long too. So sometimes there was only one chapter that I could read a day because I was so busy. So I would like to read some more, but it's going to take some time. And I, I'm starting with book two of the trilogy. Do you know what series you'd be wanting to start next? Um, well, I don't know about series. I think that I would read Elantris, although you'd oh, mentioned okay. that um, Brandon Sanderson is wanting to turn that into a series. It's not a series right now, and it won't yeah. be for a while, so, um, yeah, so it's a standalone right now. So I think that would be a good start for me to just read uh, a story that's currently held within one book right now. So you're not ready to commit to Stormlight Archives? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm not ready to commit. But I, I that doesn't mean that I don't want to read it. Maybe okay. in the summer, that would be the perfect opportunity for me to pick it up because typically teachers get a summer vacation and I cannot wait. I, I do look forward to reading that when I have a little bit more time on my hands. Okay, so Way of Kings next summer. Got it. <laughs> sure, if that's what you heard. <laughs> that's what I heard. Okay. <laughs> what was your reading experience like reading fantasy for the first time or high fantasy? Hmm. Well, I guess my experience with reading Mistborn is it is high fantasy, but it's not like your classic fantasy where it's not set... With a, it's a medieval fantasy. background and peasants and a king. Although there are kings here um, and rulers. Um, There's kind of peasants too. There, Yeah, that's <laughs> true. There are. It's not set in the past. It's set into a possible future. And um, the distant past is talked about in this book. But I enjoyed that. I liked that it was different. It wasn't what I was expecting I think just looking at the cover, I was expecting something that was 
mystical and maybe magical. Um, so I was met with that, but I, I enjoyed it. I think that fantasy as a genre would probably one that I, be one that I would continue looking into because I did enjoy it. Awesome. So then what were some of your favorite elements of fantasy? Or what do you like to Mm. see in fantasy books? I like that it's fantastical. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it is in the, it is in the definition. Yeah, it's, it's, it's based on, so what makes it believable is that it's loosely based on things that we see in our universe, in our world. But it, um... It brings these elements of magic that are really cool. Um, so you like the magic system? I do like the magic system. I like that it's based off of things that we know, but presents them in a way of, well, you don't really know. This is what, what these things do. Um, so I, I like that you can understand the magic system uh, a little bit. It's not like made up elements or made up things that we have no grasp of connecting to in our real world. Uh, so I did enjoy that there is that connection. I also just like that it transports you. Um, and you know, books should, should do that in some sense, especially if you're reading fiction. I think that, um, that element I enjoy about fantasy is that it's something that could be. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have any favorite elements of Mistborn specifically without talking about spoilers? Mm-hmm. Um, Hmm. That's a tough way to not talk about spoilers (laughs) and talk about elements that I particularly liked. I enjoyed the feel. Okay. The tone? The the tone, the... I guess you could say that the colors that are... I mean, it's pretty drab, so... The The world. The world is, yeah. And it is depicted in high detail. Uh, So you get images of what the places look like. I really liked the detail work that Sanderson wrote into, particularly with the main character. I guess I could say that Vin is a main character. When she discovers things as not in a typical place that she would be, um, she, she marvels at what she sees, and everything is explained in detail as she's looking at all of these things. So I really enjoy that because that puts you right in the scene. I, I imagine that I was there and I could see everything that she was looking at. So, yeah, I enjoyed that particularly so about like, Miss Bourne. You like the character work? I liked the um, the scenery work. Scenery. Yeah, okay. the scenery work. And the character work is great. I had to, a few characters that were some of my favorites. Um, yeah, so they're, they're lovable characters. Is there anything that you're hoping to see in fantasy or anything that you're looking forward to reading in the fantasy genre? Hmm. Or elements, I don't know, maybe like elements that you hope to see. Elements that I hope to see? Well, I guess I I went into reading this book without knowing what to expect. And I just picked it up and started reading it. And you didn't really tell me a whole lot about it before. So that was good. Um... And I actually don't have any experience reading classical fantasy. So I would like to dive into that a little bit and just compare and see what that's like. Um, So that's maybe something that I'll look into a little bit. But I did enjoy this sort of like modern fantasy. Okay, so next summer you're going to read Way of Kings and Lord of the Rings. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) That's your reading assignment for next summer. That's all I can do next summer, I guess. (laughs) Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what would you rate this first Mistborn book on a five-star scale that we use in Goodreads and on BookTube? Hmm. Five-star scale with five being the highest? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think that this book deserves anything less than a five. I think that it deserves the five. I'm looking forward to the other books in this series being at least a five, if not more. Which, that's the last one, right? So, yeah, I, um, it sets the bar high. And I, I, you had shared with me that you really like the second book. And I'm really looking forward to that. Because I'm reading that right now. So, uh, I have high expectations. And it did not disappoint. It actually delivered... Because I didn't know what to expect, it delivered something that was enjoyable. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what surprised you the most in this book? Any elements that... I don't know. You didn't expect. Hmm. 
What surprised me? I think that, um, <laughs> I don't know how to say this without offending. Um, I, okay, so I don't consider myself a, a reader, right? I do read, but I'm not like, I read books all the time or have five books that I'm reading at a time. I read one book and it takes me a while. And um, I had always pictured that fantasy was read um, by a certain type of people. And I, I think that I'm becoming, becoming one of those, but there's a certain level of uh, commitment that you need to have to read, like, a bunch of fantasy. I don't know if that's going to be me. Um, we're nerds. It's okay. You okay, can say yeah. it. Okay, yeah. So it's that's the word nerds. is that I'm thinking of <laughs> is that that was surprising is that... Um, it's relatable. That it's you not, enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. <laughs> he was surprised that he enjoyed it because he doesn't consider himself to be a nerd. No. But actually, I, I, he is a nerd. I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> I, that's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> I I guess I'm surprised that it's not what I was expecting it to be. Like okay. Sword. Well, there are some sword fights. Um, but like... <laughs> Um, but you like, like them. <laughs> people playing Dungeons and Dragons in their basement. You know, like that's kind of like. Uh, <laughs> did you play Dungeons and Dragons in your basement? I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was like. Um, I was expecting some level of nerdiness in that way, but I didn't get it. And it was actually. Okay. Um, it, it was surprising. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, okay, I'm going to try to interpret what you just said, but maybe the, like the, uh, there's a cheesy element that mm -hmm. you expected that maybe wasn't there as much right yeah okay and that was it yeah it, it was not written in the way that i had assumed that high fantasy would be mm -hmm. okay okay we'll move on <laughs> <laughs> we don't want anyone to come and beat julio up over here no please don't <laughs> Okay, so we're going to enter the spoiler section, so if you haven't mm. read Mistborn, we thank you for watching, but we are going to talk a little bit about his spoilery review thoughts. So, I'm very curious, what are your predictions for the series going forward? So now you can use spoilers in your descriptions. Ooh. Well, I predict, and I can kind of see this theme starting out with the first book, and it's... The theme of exploring what would happen in a world if people who wanted to see good had their way. And it, it, it kind of raises this theme in the first book of, is brokenness in the world necessary to keep things balanced? And, you know, you don't really think about that sometimes. I, I think that it does a really good way of presenting it of, what if that was necessary? Because that's what the rule, Lord Ruler had kind of hinted that he was necessary to keep balance in the world. And, um, well, with the huge spoiler, right? Um, in book two, the Lord Ruler has, as far as we know, has perished. And I think my guess is that probably destruction of some sort that we haven't even seen is going to come in book two. And it's, it's strange that it'll come through these idealists that wanted to have a good world through politics we'll see that politics will fail we'll see that conquest and evil is still existent and i think that the world is going to crumble hmm. that's a pretty major prediction yeah we'll see what <laughs> happens though you're five or six chapters into the book too, so maybe you yeah. you can kind of see some hints of that. I can. Okay. Yeah. I was really I was curious to ask you what did you think of the magic system that you you know know so far. There's there's actually a lot more for you to discover in the series, but what do you how do you think mm -hmm. what do you think about it so far? Well, I I'm starting to remember what certain things do, what certain metals do, and. At first, so Sanderson's writing style, he just kind of throws you into the world, and then, at least in this series, he tells you what it means not too later. Uh, uh, as you've mentioned in the Storm series, um, the Stormlight series, there isn't, like, it takes a while before you're rewarded with, what is this actually, like, mm -hmm. what's the point of this? How does it work? Uh, that's revealed many chapters after it's been introduced. And this one, you get it right away. Like, like a whole book Or after. a whole book after, right? <laughs> so this one, I feel like it delivers immediately. 
And uh, there was only one chapter where Kelsier is kicking butt. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. I, I hope that he'll tell us what's going on. What does it mean to burn copper? What does it mean to burn tin? Um, and did he drink these things? Like, did he actually drink them? And then you realize, okay, yeah, they do. Okay, that makes sense. Um, oh, that's what he's doing. They, they could feel the different stores of the metals. Um, so I like the, the magic system. I think that... Um, you can kind of wrap your brain around it where you can push off of metals and if they're on something that's heavier than you are, you, you can actually launch. If it's lighter, it comes back at you. So there's this level of um, high speed to the scenes and there's a lot, they're action packed and they keep you entertained. So I think that the action elements of the book are, you know, with the magic system. So uh, I, I like that. And I also like that in this first book, you're introduced to the, that there are things about Elemency that you don't know. That there are some things that they are yet to find out. And mm -hmm. also, what's this thing with the mists that you can draw power from? And as we're discovering, that might be possible with, with Vin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's things to learn, for sure. There are. I'm excited for you to learn them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what did you think of the story overall? Overall? Um... Did you think it was a good story? Did you think, I don't know, did you think it was a bad story? I don't know. <laughs> no, I didn't think it was a bad story. I think that uh, as far as storytelling for Mistborn is that it's an enjoyable story. Um, I think that there are multiple things happening at once. So especially in the middle of preparing the assault on the Lord Ruler, you have a front with the army that is over in the caves. You have... Vin, who's learning how to become a noble woman. You also have Kelsier doing his thing, trying to get the noble, the noblemen against each other, the noble families. So there's multiple things that are happening at once, and I think it does a good way of moving them together, not just like deep dive into one story and then okay, now let's pick up with another one. It it feels like all of those storylines are moving forward together. Um, so I did enjoy that. So the last question I have for you is: Were there any disappointments in it or anything that you like wanted to see or anything you didn't like and maybe maybe there is and maybe there isn't but I just thought I would include that question hmm well I I don't know if I would say that I didn't like but it was kind of a surprise um that there's this it, it seemed out of character for the story because it's set up it's very it kind of seemed out of place and came out of nowhere is this element of like there's this love or romance developing. Okay. Um, it was weird uh, because it just, it felt kind of out of place with everything that was set up. And um, there's this heist that's happening and it's action packed. And there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity to develop this romance. So I think that um, it kind of came towards the end and now in book two, it's, it's just like it's established now. I wish that if there was this uh, romantic relationship between Vin and Lord Elland, that there would be a little bit more build up, a little bit more background. Um, they do spend some time together, but it was just kind of like, oh, I guess I'll just kind of throw this in there. But it seems out of place. You know what? I actually felt similar after I read the first book. So hmm. I can I can see where you're coming from there. I'll be curious to know how you feel about that as the book develops. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, me too. <laughs> but I actually, I actually felt the same way. I mm -hmm. thought it, I thought it was a little bit out of the blue too, and um, felt like we didn't spend a lot of time with it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I can agree with that actually. Yeah, it's kind of like watching, um, watching an opera love scene develop where it's like, hi, I met you. We are so madly in love with each other right We're now. We're soulmates, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know, La Boheme. Uh, mm. Here, I touched your hand. Now uh, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's too true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that is everything that I wanted to ask you, unless you have anything that, to add. Um, I will add that I... I did enjoy Brandon Sanderson's writing. So I, I appreciated him as an author. I think that he has a really good style that I like. And I also found a few things that he did that were really cool. Um, so he has, 
I noticed that throughout paragraphs, even if there's a paragraph break, it could still be the same voice. So sometimes if you see a paragraph break, it might break into another character and back and forth. But uh, sometimes I had to just look at the context of what I was reading to see, oh, it's the same character and they're still talking. I also enjoyed that um, he goes back and forth between the third person of someone that's observing all the characters and first person. Sometimes he'll write uh, from the perspective of one of the characters, either Vin or Kelsier, that will say, I did this or I saw this or I think this or I feel this. But then in other times, uh, the writing is in third person. Vin did this. She saw that. She mm-hmm. turned away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was interesting. Um, and it's not a good or bad thing. It's just maybe like a signature thing of his writing. It is actually in, in other works, too. He does play with perspective a lot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that is something that he likes to do. Yeah. So it, uh, it was well received. All right. Well, that is everything that I wanted to ask you. And it looks like... You had a good time reading Mistborn, and mm-hmm. you're going to be continuing on with the series, I and I can't wait for you to find out what happens next, and then we can gush all about it. Sounds great. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more of me or Julio. He shows up every so often in my videos. <laughs> and keep reading great books, and until next time, bye-bye. Wait, I'm in a thumbnail. Okay. So what were what the? So what were you? F- <laughs>